man who tried to assassinate Reagan speak out after Donald Trump shooting. The man who tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan has disavowed violence in the wake of the attempt on Donald Trump's life. John Hinckley Jr., who wounded the former U.S. president during an attack in 1981, wrote on X, violence is not the way to go. Give peace a chance. The post came days after Mr. Trump was shot at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania. Although Hinckley did not directly mention the Republican presidential nominee, people were quick to draw the connection, responding with bemusement at his statement. One ex-user summed up the sentiment of many commenters, writing, Dude you literally shot the 40th president of the United States. A spectator was killed and two others were seriously injured in Saturday's attack on ex-president Mr. Trump where one of the bullets grazed his ear. The gunman, who has been identified as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks, was shot dead by the Secret Service at the scene. Hinckley was freed in 2022 after 41 years spent under psychiatric care and court supervision, having been acquitted by reason of insanity at a trial in 1982. Restrictions on his freedom had gradually been lifted in the lead-up to his release, including limits on social media use. By the time he was unconditionally released, he had more than 28,000 followers on X, then Twitter, which has since grown to more than 62,000. Hinckley became a household name after wounding Mr. Reagan and three others outside a Washington hotel. He was suffering from acute psychosis and wanted to impress actress Jodie Foster, who he was obsessed with at the time of the shooting. Mr. Reagan recovered after surgery for a punctured lung. However, his press secretary Jim Brady was left with permanent disabilities after the first of six bullets Hinckley fired hit his head, shattering the brain cavity. Mr. Reagan died in 2004 aged 93 after having Alzheimer's disease for a decade. Star Wars helmet and Indiana Jones hat among iconic Hollywood props up for sale at auction. The iconic hat Harrison Ford wore in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is one of nearly 2,000 rare Hollywood props up for sale at auction. The famous fedora is expected to fetch up to $550,000 during a four-day sale in Los Angeles next month. It's one of 1,900 rare and valuable items from Hollywood blockbusters up for grabs, along with a Batwing model miniature used by Michael Keaton in the 1989 Batman film, which is expected to sell for between $250,000 and $500,000. In the same high-value price range is a biker scout helmet from Star Wars, Return of the Jedi. One of the standout pieces is Joaquin Phoenix's final battle costume as Commodus, from Ridley Scott's 2000 epic Gladiator, with an estimated price of between $80,000 and $160,000. Other items include John Travolta's leather jacket from Saturday Night Fever, a pair of earrings worn by Julia Roberts in the romantic comedy Pretty Woman and the 3.3-meter, 11-foot, principal filming model of the spaceship in Alien, the Nostromo. Forrest Gump's famous box of chocolates, which is also being sold, could be yours for between $20,000 and $40,000. For Marvel fans, Chris Evans' shield from the 2016 film Captain America, Civil War will also be available to bid for. Brandon Allinger, chief operating officer of Prop Store, which is behind the sale, called it an incredible opportunity for movie fans to own a piece of cinematic history. He said, whether you're a seasoned collector or new to memorabilia collecting, this event promises something extraordinary for everyone. The auction will take place in Los Angeles from 15 to 18 August. <laughs> Manchester United star Marcus Rashford banned from driving. Manchester United star Marcus Rashford has been given a six-month driving ban for speeding in his Rolls-Royce. The 26-year-old was reportedly caught going at 104 miles per hour on the M60 in Manchester in December last year. A court official confirmed the ban and said he had been fined $2,155, ordered to pay $155 court costs and an $85 surcharge. 
The footballer admitted the offense under the single justice procedure. Rashford, who wasn't picked for England's Euro 2024 squad, is believed to earn about $388,000 per week. He was caught speeding less than three months after he crashed a different Rolls Royce worth $905,000 after leaving the club's training ground. No ambulance was required after the collision, which involved another vehicle. Rashford also reportedly owns a McLaren 765LT and a $452,000 Lamborghini Urus Performante, but will now have to leave them in the garage until January. After his omission from the England squad earlier this summer, Rashford told fans he wanted to reset mentally after a challenging season in which he scored just eight goals. He told his followers on X he was taking a break from social media to rest and reset. <coughs> Nearly complete dinosaur fossil sells for record $44 million. A nearly complete fossil of a stegosaurus has sold for a record $44.6 million, becoming the most valuable fossil ever sold at auction. An anonymous U.S. buyer outbid six others for the set of bones, dubbed Apex, at Sotheby's in New York on Wednesday. They paid an Apex price, beating the previous auction record of $31.8 million spent on a Tyrannosaurus Rex nicknamed Stan in 2020 and smashed the presale estimate of $6 million. Apex stands 3.3 meters tall and 8.2 meters in length, putting it among the most complete fossils ever found. The dinosaur had lived long enough to show signs of arthritis, the auction house said. Cassandra Hatton, who had Sotheby's science-related business, said Apex has now taken its place in history, some 150 million years since it roamed the planet. Apex, she said, is like a coloring book dinosaur, for its well-preserved features. The buyer is American and intends to look into loaning Apex to an institution in the U.S. The paleontology community has mixed feelings about dinosaur fossil sales, as some believe the specimens belong in museums or research centers that cannot afford huge auction prices. A commercial paleontologist named Jason Cooper discovered the fossil in 2022 on his property near, perhaps unsurprisingly, the town of Dinosaur, Colorado, a tiny community near Dinosaur National Monument and the Utah border. The first dinosaur to be sold at auction was a T-Rex named Sue, who went for $8.2 million in 1997. It is the first time an auction house has been involved with a specimen of this kind throughout the whole process, from discovery to sale, Sotheby's said on its website. <coughs> London's burning actor faces trial for alleged sexual offenses. Former London's burning actor John Alford faces trial over charges of sex offenses involving a girl aged under 16. The 52-year-old, who rose to fame in Grange Hill, is charged under his real name John Shannon. Alford, of Holloway, North London, is accused of four counts of sexual activity with a child and two relating to a second female of sexual assault and assault by penetration. The Crown Prosecution Service CPS, said he denied all charges at a plea hearing in September last year. There will be a pre-trial review hearing on 18 November at St. Albans Crown Court, before the trial begins on December 2nd at the same court. It is estimated to last seven days. As a teenager, the Glasgow-born actor played Robbie Wright for five years in the BBC drama Grange Hill. His highest profile role came in London's Burning, a show following the lives of firefighters in the capital running from 1988 until 2002. Alfred played Billy Ray in the ITV drama from 1993 until 1998. <laughs> Jody Marsh refused license to keep lemurs at Animal Sanctuary. A former model has been refused a license for exotic animals after taking a meerkat and an owl to a pub. Jody Marsh, who owns Fritz Farm in Linsell, Essex, applied for a dangerous wild animals license to keep eight ring-tailed lemurs in January. 
But Uttlesford District Council rejected the application this week, citing Ms. Marsh twice bringing a young meerkat to a pub and instances where rehomed creatures escaped from the five-acre animal sanctuary. The Council's Licensing and Environmental Health Committee also heard the 45-year-old once brought an owl to a pub and raised concerns over the noise of the lemurs possibly disturbing the local community. A spokesperson for the Council said it was not appropriate to grant the license. Ms. Marsh has said she will appeal the Council's decision. In remarks provided to the committee throughout her application, Ms. Marsh explained she was unable to leave the meerkat she twice brought to the pub alone as it was eight weeks old and needed feeding once every hour. Ms. Marsh also contended the council did not treat this application equally for me, calling the process biased and unequal. She also claimed only one meerkat in her care escaped for 90 seconds and said Fritz Farm already houses 11 primates. The council spokesperson said the panel's decision was based on relevant information and the legislation. They then added, given the applicant has a right to appeal the decision to the magistrate's courts, it would not be appropriate for us to comment further.